Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to Esther's Song of Praise. I hope that all of you are having an amazing day. It is August 12th, a Monday, the beginning of a new work week. And we are also beginning a new book of the Bible, the book of Romans today, where the Apostle Paul is writing and talking about the importance of doctrine and not only the importance of doctrine and knowing ourselves as human beings and Christians following the Lord, but he also allows us to have a revelation on the last five chapters about how to apply that biblical wisdom and knowledge to our lives. So with that being said, I hope that all of you guys are having an amazing Monday. I'm going to ask the Lord to bless his word and then we will jump right into the book of Romans. Lord God, we worship you and thank you today. We ask, Father, that you would bless your word as we get into this new book. Father God, the book of Romans, we ask, Lord, that you would help us to understand your word, to glean every biblical principle that you would have for each of us during these varying seasons of our lives. Lord God, wherever we are in our walk with you, wherever we are, however old we are, wherever we are in the world, Lord, we just ask that you would make your, your word plain to us, Father God, that you would give us ears to ear ears to hear, but not only ears to hear, but a heart and a mind to understand, Father God. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just continuously guide us and give us biblical wisdom every day, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Romans, chapter one. The New International Version. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets and the holy scriptures regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we received grace and apostleship, to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Christ, to Jesus Christ. Rome, who were loved by God and called to be his holy people. To all in grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's longing to visit Rome. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve in my spirit and preach in the gospel of his son, is my witness how constantly I remember you and my prayers at all times. And I pray that now, at last, by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I'm so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. God's wrath against sinful humanity. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, 
God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being in birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in their sinful desire of their hearts to sexual, sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised, amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Let's go back a little bit to the beginning. Let's go ahead and break these down. The verses of Romans. So Paul begins this book in this chapter, introducing himself as a servant of Christ Jesus, which of course is very important, right? If you know anything about the story of the apostle Paul, how he was first saw persecuting Christians until he had the conversion, right? From the Lord. And now he introduces himself as a servant of Christ Jesus. He's an apostle set apart for the gospel of God and the gospel that he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, right, Jesus, who's a descendant of David and appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, which is, again, so important, right? That is the premise, the very tenet of Christianity. Jesus Christ, our Lord. So through him, we have received grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to obedience, right? So he's like, listen, we are called by the gospel. We are called by the power of Jesus Christ to save souls. That's our ministry. That is what we're called to do. Rome, who is loved by God, are called to be his holy people. Again, right? People were feeling like, you know, they didn't know if they were completely covered, if they were, you know, as Romans considered to be Christians. But Paul is reassuring them that the Lord loves all of his people, all of his creation, including those in Rome. He loves them. And he finishes just, you know, in, um, to all in grace and peace to you from God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul goes on to talk about how he wants to visit Rome, right? He loves Rome. Again, just reiterating that he thanks the Lord for all of them and that he hopes the Lord will send him to Rome very soon. Um, he doesn't want them to be unaware, right? He wants to continue to encourage them and encourage them also to encourage each other in the faith. 
he's obligated both to the Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish, right? He's like, listen, the Lord loves everybody. And my job is to bring everyone to the understanding of who Jesus Christ is and what Christianity is. That's why he's so eager to preach the gospel to them who are in Rome. This is my favorite verse of the chapter, right? Verse 16, it's, it's a declaration. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, right? It's the power of God that brings everyone to salvation um, who believes first the Jew and then to the Gentile. It includes everyone. I love that. Then he goes on to talk about God's wrath against sinful um, humanity. So he's talking about people in their wickedness, them being pretty much given over to their own um, depravity, right? And that's what the Lord does. Like he allows us to choose, right? So he's saying that people, even though they knew God, they did not glorify him. They did not thank him. They did not, you know, worship him as God. Instead, they worshiped themselves and their own um, desires. They became fools is what he said. Um, therefore, God gave them over to their own sinful desires. And that's what the Lord, of course, we can see that, right? Um, if people don't choose to serve the Lord, then they end up choosing themselves, which is idolatry. So he just gives people over to their shameful lust. Um, and then that becomes, you know, manif it manifests itself when they are evil and greedy and full of envy. It's just a mess, <laughs> right? He's warning Christians not to live that way. So um, even though people know better, they choose to live, you know, a wicked lifestyle. But as Christians, he's encouraging all of us to live by the Holy Scriptures. So with that being said, I hope this was a blessing to you. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope that all of you are having a blessed Monday and I will talk with you in the next one. Take care guys. Goodbye.